what's going on guys? In case you missed my last unboxing video, I unboxed a Super Micro server grade motherboard that I wanted to have around just to basically familiarize myself with ESXi. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's from VMware and it's a software that is basically all about virtualizing environments and that's something that I really want to get into, you know, server hardware, server software and how to implement it. Uh, unfortunately, that motherboard did not work out. I had nothing but problems with it, despite the fact that I read online that people have used it with ESXi. So rather than trying to drag out this whole crazy RMA process, I decided that for now, I'm just going to send that back. And you know, for the same around the same price, I landed this guy. This is a ASUS Z87M Plus motherboard. This is a very, very entry level motherboard. It costs about $130 from the folks over at ASUS. Now, if you guys are interested in building a Hackintosh, this motherboard should work. I it's still in the box, I haven't confirmed it, but there's really no reason that this board shouldn't work out of the box with OS X. But uh, as I said in my last video with the Super Micro motherboard, that's really not going to be the focus of this board. And so like I said, I'm going to be installing ESXi on here. Now here's the Z87M Plus board. Really, really quick glance around the box. Uh, you can see we have some Intel uh, badges up there for you know Core i3, i5, i7, you know all that fun stuff. LGA 1150, this is a Haswell motherboard. Get a little bit more into all that stuff later. Uh, here's just a really quick and dirty look at the box. You know, I'm trying not to get that uh, that light glare on there. I do apologize for that. Uh, but with that said, you know, very basic motherboard, very entry level. Once again, this board theoretically can run OS 10 just fine if that's your end game. However, like I said, it will not be the focus for this build. So opening the box here, first thing we see, motherboard right off the bat, very Apple esque, I'll say. In case you couldn't tell, this is a micro ATX form factor, so it's not mini ITX or ATX. Uh, you know, so there's that. We do also do have some accessories back in here. So we have some SATA cables, and uh, that's it. They give us two SATA cables here, which I already have. You know, I have more SATA cables than a normal plate of spaghetti has noodles at this point. I have tons of those. So there's that. Here's a rear I/O panel. Actually, a pretty nice rear I/O panel. I'm really liking the uh, the black and the green. That's pretty neat. Uh, but for a, a basic board like this, usually they're just kind of, you know, silver or chrome. Uh, this one actually has some color and some style to it. I like that. Even though it's going to be going on a test bench, I'm not going to be using it, but still nice to know they include some style. Here we have the Z87M Plus out of the box in all of its glory. I do want to say this is a very standard motherboard in terms of the platform that it's on. Being on the Z87 chipset, we have a lot of the standard features that come with that and nothing else. But then again, as I said earlier, this is a $130 motherboard, so you know you kind of get what you pay for. But I'd imagine for anyone that's in the range, you know, in this price range for this motherboard, this is going to have a lot of those awesome features for you. So uh, really quick, just getting into the the meat and potatoes here, we have the processor socket up here. Once again, socket 1150, all Haswell is at this point in time. Uh, Core i3, i5, i7. You can even throw a Z on in here. So me, like I said, this is going to be used as a server but for me more of a learning lab so I just have a little core i3 that's going to go in here and that'll work no problems however if you're really serious about having a server on your home network that maybe is a file server or something you may want to consider throwing a Xeon in there but you know for me personally like I said it's just a little learning lab machine and so a core i3 will do me just fine uh, to the right of that we do have our RAM slots. This once again is very standard of the Haswell platform. We have support for up to 32 gigabytes of RAM and that RAM can actually be run at all the way up to 2800 megahertz. So that's some very fast overclocked RAM. Once again, for a $130 motherboard, that's gonna be more than plenty uh, for most people out there. Just below the RAM, we have our little heatsink for our chipset. And to the right, and I guess lower right of that, uh, we have our SATA options. Now, Haswell brings native support for up to six SATA 3 ports, which we have here. If you go to maybe a motherboard like the Z87WS, which I just recently released a Hackintosh hardware video for, go ahead and check that out down below in the description if you're interested. Uh, that motherboard actually has 10 SATA 3 ports, and the way they do that is they add a secondary SATA controller onto the motherboard. This just has the six native ones brought by Haswell, so you're not going to get any additional, but once again, the whole price thing for how much you pay, I'm sure most people will be just fine with you know having six SATA ports. So once again, they're all SATA 3. You can plug in a solid state drive to any one of these and get, you know, the, theoretically, the maximum throughput of that drive. Along the bottom here, we do have some USB 2.0 headers, three of them to be exact. And I kind of skipped over this, but all the way up here by the RAM slot, which is a very typical spot for it nowadays, we do have a single USB 3.0 header. So, you know, if you want to have some USB 3.0 and 2.0 on, you know, on the front of your case, you could absolutely do that here, no problems. Our PCI options on this board are a little restricted, but moving up top here, we have a PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slot. So, you know, if you have a dedicated GPU, this is going to be the slot you want to put it in. Here we have two PCI 1X slots, which is good for just, you know, like a little wireless card or any similar accessory. And down here we have a PCI Express 2.0 by 16 slot. 
Now I know this motherboard does support Crossfire. Well, you know, after all, it does say it right there. I believe it does support SLI as well, but of course you're not gonna get those fantastic speeds as if both of these slots were generation three. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you're a gamer, you're probably not gonna wanna go for a board like this. But if you're just someone that you know has a single GPU or you know if you're even using the onboard graphics, then the PCI options here really aren't that big of a concern for you. Right above that top PCI slot, we have a front panel audio header, so there's that, as well as a fan header. Now on this motherboard, by the way, that's a four pin fan header, and on this motherboard we have three of them. We have one here right, right next to that audio port, and we also have two additional ones right up here at the top right here. So once again, these are all four pin connections. So you know if you have a case fan, those RPMs of the fans will adjust depending on how much your CPU is being utilized, which is a nice feature. To the left of the CPU socket here, we find a single heat sink. There are no heat pipes or anything like that, so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you want to maybe do some video editing or something on this board that requires a really, you know, a lot of CPU usage. If you want to throw, you know, a Core i7 in here and have it running a lot, then cooling on this motherboard is probably not optimal for you. Moving above this heat sink, speaking of heat, we find an 8-pin CPU power header. You can overclock on this motherboard, the Z87 chipset does allow for that. However, like I previously discussed, the cooling around the CPU socket is not great, and therefore if you have you know, a 4770K, you're probably going to want to overclock it. But that's not necessarily something that I would recommend on this motherboard, at least not particularly high frequencies. But then again, that kind of defeats the point of having an unlocked processor in the first place. So you can overclock on this motherboard. You do have the option to give that CPU some more juice. However, it's not something that I would particularly recommend. So that's about all there is for the face of the motherboard, but really quick before I scoot on out of here, I'm gonna give you guys an overview of the rear IO. So here we have a PS2 port, USB 2.0 ports, two of them, optical audio, HDMI, VGA, and DVI video outputs, four USB 3.0s, a single Ethernet, which by the way is controlled by an Intel chipset, as well as our various audio outputs, which are basically found on every single motherboard out there. So thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to let me know what you guys think about the Z87M Plus from ASUS down below in the comments. Give this video a quick like, I really appreciate it. Be sure to let me know any content that you guys want to see on my channel, and I'll be sure to see you guys very soon.